guys, it's Nancy, and we're back here today for another really cool art lesson. I am uh, going to be doing a really cool rock art or petroglyph lesson with you, inspired by the Nisanon people of our Nevada County area. Let's get started. So the Nisanon rock art is such a beautiful form of art that you can find out in the world. Um, walking on Tribute Trail in Nevada City, you'll see many of them if you look closely enough. Let's look more closely at them here. These are some examples of ones that I have found in that area. And there's a sign there that right at the head of the trail that you can find some of these and get an idea to what to look for because there's even more if you look closely. The Nisenon people have lived here in the Sierra Nevada foothills for thousands of years. They come from a larger group of Native Americans known as the Maidu. Perhaps you know of the Maidu Center. Petroglyph is an image that is pecked or carved into rock, exposing the lighter color underneath the surface. Petroglyphs are also called rock art. Rock art depicts important events, stories, and spiritual beliefs of the Native American people. It's a little bit like a newspaper or reading some, uh, an advertisement for something important or a plaque. So I have some, uh, again, some images that you can see little drawings. We're gonna be doing our own drawings today, not unlike our sample uh, that I had fun making with colored pencils. Look at that in a minute. But before I go on any further, this is a really cool picture of um, a Nisanon tribe member in Nevada City, California, here where we live, uh, celebrating the Nisanon Heritage Day, which is November 11th. And the wonderful costume and regalia and um, the dances are just so incredible. So I encourage you to uh, go and check that out when you can. All right, so the Basically, the rock, let me start fresh over again. Where am I going? Oh, what is it on me? Here are some other examples of rock art or petroglyphs um, from other regions of the world. So you can see what other images different tribes have used to show their stories and tell their important histories. Here we see some images of people, it looks like. And we have, this is called Newspaper Rock. And this is in um, the southwest of the United States. And it's absolutely chock full of images of, looks like wheels and rams and really wonderful animals. Lots of things to think about what to do. Lots of options for you. Let's get started. Here are some general rock art symbols for you to think about using in your artwork. There are um, little things like bears and fish and wise men and different seasons and the sun and campfires and camps, things that you would find potentially on rock art around the United States and the rest of the world too. You also are encouraged to choose your own symbols to describe what you would like to talk about in your life, what's important to you. What would you put on your rock? I started with a uh, brown paper bag and I cut, using some scissors, I cut out what I felt like was a fun rock shape. It doesn't have to look exactly like a rock. It could just look like a slab of rock or part of a cliff, which is often where you'll find these petroglyphs or rock art. Um, and you'll start to notice them when you go hiking or walking with your family in this area. You'll start to see, oh, there's one hiding. Uh, there's one that I saw as I was walking with my dog. He jumped up on top of a rock in the tribute trail right by the bridge and I looked at him like, what, what is he doing? And went to tug him down and I said, Chester, what are you doing? And he was standing right over top of a basket shape and it was little stylized little lines to look like a basket. And I never noticed it before. I've walked there 10 times and never seen it. So when you, uh, you're rewarded to start looking and seeing what's around you. So I think we should get started. Let's do it. 
So beginning with a piece of brown paper bag. Something simple. If you have brown paper that you'd rather use or gray paper, even white paper will do. You could always make it look rocky later. Um, a couple different shape ideas, nothing too fancy. Um, I'm gonna start with this rock because it's feeling like the right rock to start with. Um, when, I, when I think about what I wanna tell, what story I wanna tell, I don't always have a, a step-by-step -step idea. Sometimes I just am attracted to an image or a, a mark. And I really liked the idea of a river um, and that was really easy to draw and fun. I really liked the idea of these uh, sort of deer hoof prints. You can see it's a little crinkly, so it might be shadowy. Um, there's also a fish with lines around it, which in our key over here that we saw earlier are symbols. That means many fish when there's lines around it. A little bear paw, which is a fun way of drawing the bear paw. There's different ways of doing this. So if you have uh, an idea, go with it. See how it looks. And then of course the moon, because the moon is always there and keeps us company. Um, so let's get started doing it. I, um, I've already cut the shape out, but if you're not careful with the scissors when you do it, you might end up cutting yourself. So please ask an adult if you need to, okay? Uh, if it's not rocky enough, you can make it more rocky. Again, rocks are awesome because they don't have to be perfect. You can just say, it's a rock. What are you talking about? So I'm thinking about starting. I'm gonna start with a black colored pencil. We're not going to use any pens or anything today because this is just so soft and to make it look like it's chipped out of the rock with a little piece of bone or another piece of hard rock. They didn't have hammers or chisels or anything like that. So we're thinking about what that would look like. Um, I'm going to make a bear paw like the Nisanon people made a bear paw. And I'm going to decide where I want it. This is called deciding on your composition. And it's, it's just what feels right most of the time. And then you start and then you can make adjustments or a little wiggle it a little way this way or that way. So I'm drawing light until I get it right. And then I'm gonna press a little harder so you can see it at home. And then I know that the Nissan people tend to draw um, six claws. And their, you know, <laughs> bear claws can be whatever bear claws are because they're bears and you're not gonna argue with them. So this bear claw, I'm just doing a simple, what we call a line drawing right now of the shape that's going to represent the bear claw, a bear paw and claws. And now I want a donut because I said bear paw, oh my gosh. So this one looks a little bit different, but it's also fun too, so you get to decide. Um, I'm gonna draw everything with my black pencil first, and then I'll go back in later with other colors like brown and orange and white if I decide to do that. Um, and now I'm thinking about maybe a river. I'm gonna do that like this. Oh yeah, that's a long river. Sometimes the river just has a short stretch. Try not to make it run into stuff too much, Nancy. I almost hit that. I like the three, maybe I'll add a fourth one. You have to kind of feel what you're doing. I just felt like the river, I'm flowing and soft. If I was feeling tense, I might end up with more angular lines, which would be a different kind of river. Maybe that would be a rushing rapid river after a big rain. So like in the fish idea, I'm gonna go back and look at my little symbols and see what else I want to add. I think I've already done the many fish. What about mountains? I could do that. Oh, wait, the sun. I think the sun looks like a nice one to do. And I'm noticing it's just a circle with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little short rays coming out. If you feel like uh, doing less rays, you go for it. It's all about what you decide the sun should look like. Oh, that worked out. I ran over the crease in the paper bag. Just make a little correction as I went. I'm not freaked out about that at all. 
Okay, and now I'm gonna go ray, ray. I'm gonna go on all four sides. Um, and I'm gonna keep going because that's working. Nice, liking that one. What's next? The campfire is so much fun. The campfire is a very simple one. It's just a wide X with a kind of a zigzaggy squiggly arc line on the top. So the campfire being a really nice, just a wide X with some zigzaggy lines on the top. That should be a pretty easy one to do. Now I'm doing them all right side up like it's a picture. If you decide you want to turn it and do it different ways and different angles, you go for it. So here comes a campfire. I haven't drawn this before, so let's see how that feels. I've got one there, and I know it's kind of a flat, sort of a shallow X, like a pirate, X marks the spot. And then there's a zigzag. All right, I have to think about this because I want it to be taller at the top and shorter at the side, so I might make little dots so I know how to, where to end up at and start from. Sweet. Sometimes you just have to go for it and try it and then if it doesn't look amazing, do it different next time. Okay, so I'm feeling like we have a lot in there. I might want to do some deer feet because I really like those deer feet. So let's put a couple of deer feet like it just walked across our rock. Not really, but and then, so the deer foot, you can make it how you want. It kind of, maybe you have deer in your garden like I do. Little stinkers. There. There's one foot. Now I gotta think of another place. I want it to be down here. But maybe you want to do yours. Uh, practice a little bit on a scratch paper and then um, you can put it on your rock when you're done or just not worry about it and just go for it. Okay, I'm feeling like this is a little bit um, empty down here, but let's let there be some what they call negative space. Okay, so I've got my black lines down. Let's take a little pause and you work on your drawings, your black lines. We'll come back and we'll add some more of the white and the brown and other colors to make it look super cool. And uh, then we'll do the best part, which I'll save to the last. Okay, see you in a minute. And we're back, finally here. We're ready to look at your drawings, what you've decided is on your rock. And we're going to add some more color, baby. One of the elements of art, just in case you forgot, I'm choosing a brown. There's also a dark brown in my box of colors. And there's a white and maybe an orange and maybe a blue and maybe a red. No, 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 no. Let's do a minimal color palette. That means fancy word for it. We're only using like three or four colors because you probably haven't noticed, but rock art didn't have light blue and turquoise and green in it. It's just natural stuff that they could use to make the, the colors if they're painting and chipping it out if they're using the stones to peck away at it to make the petroglyphs. So I'm gonna start by adding some white. I've done the black. I'm thinking about what it would look like if it was carved away. Um, let's give this a try. If it's hard for you to do, just do it your way. No biggie. So I'm going to add some white. Oh, my pencil, my pencil tip decided to give up. Oh yeah. Just keep rolling with it. Speaking of colored pencil tips, have you ever noticed that right when you're getting into it, your pencil breaks or you realize that your pencil is kind of what I call a flat or it doesn't have a good point on it anymore. Don't panic, just sharpen and go back. So I'm adding a little white to it um, just to kind of highlight. I'm not running over my black, I'm going next to it. 
I'm not really being perfecty perfect about it because that's not what this is about. This is about having fun and uh, doing it the way you see it. You might go, oh, that's not how I do it, Miss Nancy. And I'd say, well, show me how you do it. Okay, so then I'm gonna do one at a time. I'm gonna go back in and make it look shadowy. I'm gonna use my dark brown. So when something is recessed or indented or goes in, it has a shadow on one side often because the light's only hitting one part of it. And that way you draw it. Get those pencils out of there. You can draw it so that it looks a little bit like that. So we already have that nice black outline. I'm just throwing some brown on there on one side. Got the light on one side and the dark on the inside. You can add some more lighter brown next to the darker brown. If you decide you want to do it um, all filled in, that's cool too. Kind of can't wait to see what you do. So here is, I'm going to keep adding a little bit of brown because that looks good. You might find as you're working on your art that you go, oh, I'll try this. And sometimes you go, wow, I didn't even know how great that was going to look. And other times you go, whoa, that wasn't what I intended. Um, and so, you know, you just got to play with it. A little darker, feeling like, you know, a little messier is better for rock art. Let's get crazy. All right. And I'm feeling like maybe a little more white. Sometimes it's nice to have music on too while you're drawing, so that way you can get into it. So if you have any music you like a lot. Okay, digging that. Let's go over to the sun. Now again, I'm tempted to use yellow because yellow is such a lovely yellowy summer and sunny color. And so is orange and red, and that's usually what I do for the sun, but this is not um, a billboard or something like that. This is actually a, uh, this is a rock. So let's make it look rocky. Okay. You can shade like this. Get a little bit loopy here. Practice making different kinds of marks if you want. And different kinds of marks will give you a different look. And I'm saying that's chipped out. It's been carved. It's like a tool that I would go like this and I would go Obviously, it wouldn't be a brush and an eraser. So I'm adding some darks and some lights. I'm going to just experiment a little bit, play around with what it looks like to have lines of different color in places. And if I, I just realized I put a, a line on the wrong side, or what I thought was different, and I realized that's okay. This is rock art, for goodness sake. This isn't a ceiling somewhere in some beautiful church. This is a rock, so let's make it rocky. Let's rock it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's do the bear paw because it's a big and fabulous thing right center of our composition. Um, I think I'm taking a pause here because I want to make sure my paper is in the right position. I'm shading going in one direction with my colored pencil. This brown is sort of soft and it's getting a little bit flat. I call it flat when it's like the pencil gets a flat tire and it doesn't work as well. No biggie. We could sharpen it or we could just keep using it because it's kind of rough. I'm adding a lighter brown next to it, kind of doing a gradation or slowly going from darker to lighter. I'm kind of running out of colors because I know I'm only using a minimal color palette, as we said before. Um, and so I only have the black and two browns and white, so I have to be thoughtful about where I put things. 
I really love this, this uh, art lesson. This one's so much fun. I'm adding some highlights. All right, starting to look a little bit darker and deeper. I'm gonna go on this side and add a little bit just to kind of make it pop. You might hear us art teachers talk about making stuff pop. We're not really popping anything. We're just making it seem more exciting. And these are claws, so I want those to be really prominent. Okay, if you need to make little bear sounds while you're doing it, go for it. All right, I'm gonna do one more up here. So I'm really getting into this now. I better keep going or else we'll be here all day. Okay, so I'm gonna do the river and then the fire and then we're gonna be seeing how yours looks. Let's take a break now so you can work on your drawing and see how you like it. And uh, we'll meet you back here in a minute and we'll see how it goes. Next, I'm going to tackle the river. And I know that I'm gonna start actually with the white. I'm gonna give it a highlight. The river is a really important element in Native American culture and life. I've learned a little bit about it and I know that that's a really big source of food as you might also feel. Maybe you like to fish. It's a little bit, um, I would imagine, like going to the grocery store perhaps you can find everything you need. There's plants there, there's a place to wash your clothes, there's probably bear that come down to the river to get the fish. All right, we got some brown, we got some white, or we got some, oh yeah, we need some. I think I'm just gonna skip the dark brown and I'm gonna fill some empty space in here with this brown. The river is kind of tricky because it's just lines, so um, it's not really tricky, it's just different. So do it however you like. I'm just going to throw some of these fun wiggly wigglies in there. If you're feeling your shoulders get tight while you're coloring, sometimes I get really focused on my scrunch my face up and I forget to breathe and I just go, oh yeah, that's right. So be nice to yourself. Do a little reminder if you need to remember. Take care of yourself. Take a glass of water break. Go for a little walk. Play with your dog or your lizard, whatever you have. What I so love that river. I'm going to give it a tiny bit more white here just because, oh, my white is flat. Haha. <laughs> Oh no, I think I have a, nope, there it goes. Sometimes you have to empty the pencil sharpener. Okay, sometimes a little extra white in places will give you more of a highlight. Gonna avoid the bear claw. Now I want a donut again. Okay, so, Totally, absolutely in love with this so far. The next and final item is our campfire, which I'm a big fan of. I'm gonna go for the white. And the campfire makes me happy because it reminds me of the summer times when I would go camping, hiking, backpacking. I even saw a bear one time when I was backpacking up in Washington State. It was a little scary. It was far enough away and it was busy with some berries, but we all kind of had a moment to think what it would be like if we were actually members of a Native American tribe out in the world experiencing life in that raw way. It was pretty cool. <clears throat> so I kind of want this to be more liney the same way that I did the river, and I decided that because it's um, it's not all 
dark and like recessed or pecked away in there. It's just those lines that are pecked away. So just gonna finish it up with some brown. Maybe I'll just do that and who knows? Life is life is just for having fun sometimes and this is definitely one of those lessons. So do what you feel. Oh yeah, digging that. Maybe I'm gonna throw another little bit of a dark in there. Make it look kind of extra, extra, extra cool. And I am almost done. I'm just going to take a stand back, I call it, a little distance. I'm going to hold it up, see if it feels good. Sometimes it's good to take a little distance and stand back from your artwork so that you can see it from far away. Ask a friend or a sister or brother to do it. Um, you can also just kind of uh, take a picture of it with your phone and then look at it and see. You'd be surprised what you see when you look at your picture through a camera. So I'm feeling super duper about this. The only thing I have left to do is make it look rocky. What, I almost forgot the best part. So let's take a break before I do the next step and let you catch up and do the part where you color. Um, use your colors that feel good for you. I used white, light brown, and dark brown to color it in. And you know we started with the black. So those colors are what I use. If you decide you really are in love with the idea of using other colors, it's okay. It's your art. Okay, I'll see you back in a minute. to get rocking. We're going to do something a little crazy. I'm hoping that you had fun coloring your picture. I'm thinking that maybe you're gonna have a little bit of a look on your face when you see the next thing I'm about to do, but it's gonna be really fun, so just trust me. Oh, oh that feels good. Sometimes I do that to my artwork when I don't like it because it feels good just to get rid of stuff sometimes. Try not to though, try and keep, keep your hard work. You might like it later. But it looks super cool, it's super rocky. It looks a little bit rocky like the other one. You know, I don't know if it's rocky enough. So I'm kinda thinking, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Oh, holy, oh God, don't give up. Okay, sometimes you get really mad and you're just, That'll help you make a tight ball. Now, because we use colored pencils, it's not getting all over my hands, which is super nice. Aha. So now I'm unfurling it, opening it up, and it's quite lumpy. Sometimes you have to push on it. And if you made it really lumpy and rocky, you might want to kind of push it around a little to flatten it or not, you get to decide that you're the boss of your rock right now. So at this point, it's pretty lumpy. It's looking pretty rocky, pretty wonderfully and lumpy and very, very ready to be hung on your wall or your refrigerator. Uh, and you can then say that you made your very own Native American inspired Nisanon rock art. Thanks for coming today. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.